Bombora is a managed fund. We set it up about eight years ago, the strategy, to try and find what we call sort of emerging growth. Really cool companies that have been started up by their founders, often backed by you know, professional institutional money over the years as they've got to a point. And then we come in and then apply another round of funding and then take them through an IPO process. So we do a lot of work with the ASX here. So most of our companies start off as private companies. We then put all our skills and knowledge, bring the team to bear. We've got a whole bunch of analysts here that can help, you know, do some of the value add stuff behind the scenes that, you know, maybe sometimes it goes unseen. And we take those companies through a journey where we get the structure right, get the, get the brokers in place, get the PR right, and we take them through an IPO so that the founders can focus on running the business and we can help with all the you know, capital structure, the research that needs to go in behind the scenes, all the stuff that might scare a founder that really loves running their business but really doesn't know what goes on when the company becomes a public company. 90 Seconds is a video creation platform. It enables brands, some of the biggest in the world, to run film shoots and produce video content all over the world using local creators. In terms of building this company, we started in about 2010 and 11, completely self-funded with the likes of myself and other founders, got us through the first three or four years. Then we moved into venture funding in around 2016. We were lucky to partner with the likes of Sequoia Capital, Airtree Art of Australia and others. That took us on a path where we got a lot of funding into the company and got a chance to really grow and expand. Now, not all that growth came without pains and sometimes we overexpanded, took some risks that didn't pay off, and then we rebalanced the company and got ourselves back into a really good, strong position. Fast forward to today, we've got a team of about 70 people spread all across the world. This is our dedicated team, from engineers and designers building the product, and at the other end, you've got people that have come out of the media industry and TV production, and you put those two together and really what 90 Seconds does is fuse that talent to create this amazing platform. So we went up there and we found that in about 2010, there was a whole swag of technology companies that had been backed by venture capital funds. There's a huge amount of venture capital money in places like Singapore that backed these fantastic operators to start to grow their businesses. Now, 2010 to now is starting to get on a bit and those VCs need to find a pathway towards exit. Usually it's either sell the company to a strategic buyer or take it through an IPO process. The problem with Singapore and some of the other exchanges around Asia are the exchanges aren't that um, friendly to technology companies, and certainly when they're sort of in that sort of range of 50 to $150 million in, in value. However, the ASX loves those sort of companies and there's been more than 100 technology companies listed on the ASX just in the last sort of six, six to eight years. The 90 Seconds business ticked all the boxes for us. Great team, great ethos, great culture, great growth story. It had a institutional, high quality VC backed investor base, like-minded um, investors that could and need an exit pathway um, towards the ASX. It took a little convincing, but we had some great conversations with those institutional ACs that had backed 90 seconds in the early days. And we could see a really interesting and exciting opportunity over the next sort of three to five years for that business. I think reinvigorating the capital structure in the business, aligning all the shareholders to be common equity shareholders. I was really a, a high quality motivational factor for Tim and his management team, because it meant all of a sudden he had a, another shot to restart level capital field and take it towards that IPO pathway, you know, in the next sort of 12 months or so. In terms of our journey as a company, we've hit the 10 year mark and we want to get to the point where we can get an exit for some of our earlier investors and get the company on a path to long term sustainability. Now as a Singapore headquartered company founded in New Zealand, it seems a bit strange that we might be looking at an IPO on the ASX, but enter Bombora. Bombora have listed multiple companies on the ASX. They focus on growth companies that are later stage in their cycle. In terms of the fundraising process with Bombora, got around the market in Australia, met a bunch of institutional investors, some of which invested immediately and others which would invest a bit further down the track. A large amount of high net worth individuals 
and Bombora really ran that roadshow. Part of that roadshow for us was done on the ground, part of it was done under lockdown remotely. In terms of using this capital, we're investing across the whole business. With the geographies, we're expanding our presence in Asia Pacific from our bases in Singapore, Hong Kong, Sydney, and, and New Zealand. From a technology and platform perspective, we're growing the engineering and the product development team, and we're always keeping that product right at the front of the market. It's got to save time for creators, and it's got to make life easier for brands to create video all across the world. We're very fortunate to have 200 of the world's biggest brands as active customers with 90 seconds. Whether this is Amazon, Deloitte, or Marriott, we're talking across all different industries. So we're really focusing on building up each of those industries. Travel and tourism is coming back online. They need support from fresh video content. And 90 Seconds partners with the likes of TripAdvisor, Singapore Airlines and Qantas, and many more. A major focus for us always continues to be simplifying this user experience. Video creation's complex, it's got lots of moving parts, it's got very high skilled, talented people involved in the creation journey. Our job is to provide a platform, both software and those creators working together seamlessly with those brands. You'll see more automation and more intelligence that makes it much easier and smarter for both creators and brands to get the best out of this platform and enable us as a business to scale. I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years and for the first 14 years of that, it's primarily self-funding everything you do. I've had six years under venture financing from the likes of Sequoia and Airtree world-class investors and a significant amount of capital that's come into the company. This latest move with Bombora shows that there's an alternative past once you go past venture capital. Now, we all hear about the big VC stories and they're very evident. They become household names. You'll also hear about some really powerful, high-growing startups that become pretty major players. But what you don't hear about is the large amounts of companies that don't come out and become big companies, but they're still very high-quality companies. They're built by entrepreneurs and teams that have a deep passion for the industry they're in and they build great products and they build great businesses. And that's what 90 Seconds is. We haven't come out huge, but we've come out with a really good quality company. So what do you do in that situation where potentially the venture capital market is no longer the right fit for you, but you've been through it? Again, this is where Bombora comes in. Let me take you through some of the founder friendly terms you can get with the likes of a Bombora deal. Firstly, it's all ordinary or common stock, not preference stock. So it really lightens up the cap table, makes things a little bit easier for working with you, existing investors, and especially bringing on new investors who want to come into the company fresh. They don't want to be sitting underneath venture capital firms, they want to be sitting alongside. This is good for you as a founder, it's good for the employees with the options scheme, it's a really balanced way of getting this company onto a new trajectory. Secondly, they've got deep access into the ASX market. They know the investors who invest in public companies, the investors who are willing to get in pre-IPO, and that's what they've successfully done with us. I was able to go on a roadshow with Bombora, simulate the market, and you know, within about three months, pull together a really high quality financing round for the company. In terms of some of the big benefits you're gonna get from a deal with Bombora, if you're looking ahead with your company, you're past venture capital, you're probably gonna to need to look at expanding in some inorganic ways. So you're gonna grow your existing business, investing in product development, market expansion, and that's what we're doing in all the key regions that we're in and deeply investing in our platform. But secondly, we're looking at acquisitions. Now we haven't completed an acquisition and we don't have anyone confirmed, but we've got two acquisitions in our sites and one which is very far along. Now the only reason we can make that acquisition happen is because we've done our Bombora deal. The company's got fresh cash in the bank, it's got all ordinary stock, so it's a lot easier now when you buy a company, you can buy them with your stock and your stock has this value. And the stock's a lot more valuable than it was before when you had preference stock because everybody's on the same level. It's all ordinary stock. The second thing is with a pathway to an IPO, you're helping the other company that you buy get an exit for themselves as well because they'll have the same problems and challenges you've got. Founders, investors, employees and stock options. Everybody's trying to be able to get to that end goal for everybody else. So you can lead the way with a deal like this. Bombora have got lots of experience doing acquisitions and mergers, and that experience is something they bring to the table very practically, day by day, as we work through our acquisition opportunities. Our work up in around places like Singapore has, has led us uh, to understand that since 2010, there's a wash of high quality emerging growth businesses that have been backed by VCs up to this point in time. 
Now, when those VCs have invested over the years and you're sort of, you know, five to 10 years into that cycle, it means that the VCs need to find a pathway to exit. If they're not big enough to sell to the strategic player, or frankly, if they haven't already been sold to a strategic player, then the ASX is a fantastic option for them. So what we can do is work with those sort of companies that have gone to this point, just like we did with 90 Seconds, meet with the VCs, meet with the founders, and see if there's a meeting of minds towards, is the ASX a viable exit option for them, a liquidity event for them? Let's say the earlier VCs that came in right at the start might actually be at the end of their fund cycle now and would like to get some money off the table. We can, we can make all that happen. We can get the capital into the company to continue to grow. Also can deal with the, let's say the legacy capital structure, you know, issues from the very start of, of when that company was founded. Now, when the venture capital market is no longer right for your company, but you're used to working with these venture capital partners, it can be a challenging situation at the board table. If you believe the company needs to be capitalized and you want the capital to continue to grow, but not at venture capital rates, you might find it very hard to get that from your existing or new venture capital partners. So what do you do? You need to bring an option to the table. Now, the option you bring to the table might not be exactly what the venture partners are looking for, but if you do your job as a founder, as you always do, looking after existing investors, but primarily making sure this company is gonna win long term, you need to find an option, bring it to the table, and massage that board on the journey. Now, I'll be honest, when I brought the Bombora deal to 90 Seconds board initially, they didn't think it was potentially quite the right deal structure. Naturally, why? Because after six years of venture funding, it was no longer a venture-based deal. It was a different deal. It changes the stock structure of the company, it balances things out significantly, it's a new source of capital, and there's a little bit of a change to the governance, and now this company is on a path to being an ASX-listed company. That's a different journey than what a lot of the venture capital firms would have signed up for. But you've got a duty as the founder to look after yourself, to look after other founders and employees, and look after both existing and new investors. You've got a duty to your customers, you're trying to build a great sustainable company. So to find an option like Bombora is really exciting for founders. In terms of other companies and founders in Southeast Asia, we're really setting the scene and showing what can be done. I'm happy to speak openly about the process we've gone through with Bombora and the outcomes we've already got to date. I'm a much happier entrepreneur than I am today than I was a year ago prior to do this deal. We had some challenges in the company like you've probably got in your company, but we had a lot of opportunities. 